Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 30th August 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's quote. So today's quote is regarding equality. So we're talking about equality. So equality is a fundamental right which is present in our Article 14 of our Indian Constitution and right to equality it is also a fundamental right which present in part 3 of our Indian Constitution. So it is necessary to prepare with some quotes regarding this equality and today's article so one of the article that we are going to discuss about crimes against women and even we are going to discuss about patriarchy. So here yes it is necessary to deal with this quote regarding equality. So equality is not discrimination, equality means justice. Okay, equality is not discrimination, but equality is justice. So now let us try to see the first article. So this article, it is about patriarchy. So when you're talking about the societal issues and social issues, so one important issue that we always talk about here is patriarchy. So here women are discriminated against men. So in case, for example, you can talk about taking decisions in house. So if you see at your individual house level, at your home level, yes, who will be going to take some important decisions? It is ultimately your father, not mother. And here we can see patriarchy. And what work will your father do and your mother do? So mostly here women, they are caregivers and they are homemakers, housewife. But your fathers, they will be doing some job and they are the job makers or income earners in the form in the family. And not only this, even the society, even the society also, yes, we can see there is discrimination against women. If you're talking about in the societal level, in the workplace level. Okay. So in this way, this article, which mainly talks about curing the patriarchal mindset of legal system. So it is talking about, yes, in not only at the societal level, but even in this judiciary also, we can see there is patriarchy. So there are some cases which are given and I found that these are not much important and even you can't remember that. So now let us try to see what is the thing which is relevant from our UPSC point of view. So this article is important from our social issues which comes under our GS paper too. So now let us try to see what is the present context and I will be discussing about one important case and with that you can understand yes patriarchy is existent in this legal system as well. So if you're talking about in recent session court, so if you're talking about subordinate court, we have civil courts and we have criminal courts. Okay. That is a courts at the district level. We have civil courts and we have criminal courts. So we're talking about hierarchy of courts in India. Yes, at the bottom level, we have subordinate courts or district courts. So above that, we have high courts and we have apex court that is Supreme Court of India. So if we're talking about the subordinate courts or district courts, we have civil courts and criminal courts. So criminal courts are also called as session court okay so the meaning of the session court is it is a criminal court that is a district level court so a sessions court in karnataka sorry in kerala so while granting anticipatory bail okay so recently to an author and social activist in, in state he mainly succumbed in a case of alleging that uh, sexual harassment so in that case here sessions court in kerala while granting bail to this so and so person so it said that so here this person will be not attracted under section 354a of indian penal code so this section 354a which talks about assault or criminal force to women with intent to outrage her modesty okay so it is talking about criminal force to women okay it is regarding rape so actually here this uh, court that is session courts of kerala which said that so it will not attract under this session 354a of ipc because so this sexual harassment which happened because of sexually proactive dresses so women wear the dress and because of that dress so that led to sexual proactivation in the, in the men so because of that is not the mistake of men so it will not it will not attract under offense of section 354a of ipc so this is the thing which mainly said by the sessions court of kerala 
and this session court which mainly gave this judgment because it relied on photographs so this photograph submitted with a bail application of accused showing that the de facto that is on the uh, on the reality so the complaint was wearing a dress that was sexually proactive and hence this section 354a of ipc would not be used against the accused so they use the photograph okay so by seeing that photograph they can understand that so so and so and victim she wore the sexually proactivated dress so the observation was clearly saying that yes women's constitutional right to dignity and life and personal liberty and as well as privacy they had been compromised so here we can see that yes in this judicial officer level also yes we can see there is patriarchy so in this way here entire social legal system it is also showing patriarchy so what is this patriarchy i am saying patriarchy patriarchy number of times so what is this patriarchy so patriarchy is essentially a system of male domination so in society we can see there is a male domination in diverse aspects of life for example in moral authority in social privileges in even decision making capacity and control of property so many a times so most of the property will be under the name of male but not in the female and next one is political leadership so in all these areas we can see there is a male domination so this male domination is called as patriarchy so now let us try to understand what will be the impacts of patriarchy but this thing is not given in your article so i want to discuss this because this will be important when you are writing your essay and even your mains answers so if you are talking about what are the impacts of this patriarchy so by undervaluing the contribution to decision making so in in your home if you are taking example at the individual level so here in home so whenever mother they are giving any decisions is yes, sometimes father they will be not accepting and the father decision will be prevailing over this uh, women's decision right so here most of the times there will be undervaluing so there will be no value will be given for the women in the contribution for the decision making and they are considered that women they are not much as intelligent or as smart of men as men enough to take decisions so because of this undervaluation results in low confidence and low productivity okay and even that will be leads to the loss of opportunity for the women okay to showcase their talent so this is the first impact that is undervaluing the contribution of women and next one here is so whenever male and female they are going for the same work so if you see in the for the male counterpart so there will be getting more salary compared to that of women so this is a thing that we already seen in this yesterday's lecture in japan case study okay in japan case study the women okay they will be not taking the higher post only they will be getting part time or low productive works and they will be getting very low salary and there is also a large gap between women and as well as men in how much amount of the salary they are getting so in the same way for this male counterparts so they will be getting the more money okay so even in agriculture if you see men when they are, whenever they are coming for the agriculture labor they will be having the uh, high salary when we are comparing with of women so if women they are getting 500 rupees per day so men they will be going to get 750 rupees per day along with 100 ml of water so this is the thing that i saw really especially in our agriculture in our fields whenever we used to call this agriculture laborer for transplantation of paddy is recent i think one month ago also so i saw the same situation so women are getting just 500 rupees per day and male they are getting 750 rupees per day along with 90 ml of uh, alcohol so if you are talking about the second important or third important impact so we can see there is a glass ceiling effect so here female employees they are seldom considered for the promotions above a certain grade since a patriarchal mindset considers them unsuitable so yes there are increasing of women workforce especially if you are talking about in it sector in service sector so there is increased contribution of women but if you see here so till which level they can they can go so they will be going at certain grade but after that beyond that here there will be no promotions for the women because in this patriarchal mindset so here men they consider that women they are not much as suitable and if you see recent new companies act which makes mandatory to have a women director on the company board and this one here is by censoring her financial choices so here male member takes the financial decisions in the family but not the female so if you want to do any marriage for example if you want to 
do the marriage of your sister or brother so in the financial matter your father will be taking decisions but not your mother so how much amount should be spent in food how much amount should be spent for decoration how much amount should be spent for so and so thing okay so it is the male domain but not the female domain and it's one here is so most of the times women they will be overburdened for example if you see in the case of me itself so here i have to do this office work and after leaving office i have to take care of my children and my elderly parents and in-laws and also sometimes i have to do the household work so sometimes i will be becoming like like exhausted because of this office work and as well as because of this household work so it is not only happening with me there are number of pre women who are working so they are facing this overburden okay so with both the household work and office work since household work is considered the sole domain of a woman with the men have has no responsibility in this daily chores for example so if there are child and children so if i am doing some kitchen work so if i ask my husband to take care of the children so he will be not taking care of them okay so in this way here they mainly say that taking care of children and care work it is a sole responsibility of women but not male so this is about the overburdening of women and next one here is institutionalization of laws that perpetuate this condition so recently here we can see maternal benefit act which increased this maternity leave to 26 week for pregnant women but here there is no mention of paternal leave that is a father leave so if you see virat kohli he took 3 days of paternal leave when when anushka sharma she delivered her baby so paternal leave means nothing but the father will be also taking the leave to take care of her newly born child and as plus her wife in who is in hospital okay but here this maternity benefit act which does not talked about this paternal leave and many a times so many people they don't know about it. yes they will be also eligible for this paternal leave and as well here is though this maternal uh, maternity benefits act which mainly passed with a very good intention that yes women will be getting some rest in and this time so that will be helpful for the preparing of uh, that so and so pregnant woman mentally to go for the child birth and what happens to this point the fact that upbringing of children is a sole responsibility of mother so whenever there is no mention of this paternal leave so it says that indirectly upbringing of children it is a sole responsibility of mother but not the father so here also we can see some patriarchal mindset and next one here is by affronting her dignity so with some frequent incidents of sexual harassment at workplace and recent years government also took some measures especially government came up with this visakha guidelines that is supreme court visakha guidelines and it ordered that companies need to come up with the dedicated companies that sorry dedicated committees it mainly deals with the sexual harassment things inside the office but here what happened many companies didn't came up with this establishment or came up with this committees to conduct sexual harassment so these are some important important things that you have to remember regarding this patriarchy and let me know your comment in this uh, comment box regarding your opinions regarding this patriarchy whether it is really existent or not so if it is really existent so what are the uh, work what are the examples that you came across in your life i'm talking about in your life so what are the incidents that you came up so let me know in the comment box and you can also suggest some measures as a good citizen and now let us try to say next topic it is regarding direct benefit transfers so this article is very important actually this article which mainly focused on this andhra pradesh state government schemes but we are not focusing on just one state government schemes but here we are going to understand what is this direct benefit transfer and what are the some important types of this direct benefit transfer okay so i will be also asking you question after ending uh, discussion on this topic for sure so this topic is important from your gs paper to under governance point of view and this topic is exclusively important from your mains so now let us try to see this topic so if you are talking about this direct benefit transfer so this concept of direct benefit transfer it is regarding like so what is this means especially so if you are having bank account and if you are eligible to so and so scheme so under that so and so scheme you need to get uh, for example rupees 500 or rupees 1000 per month so directly that amount will be transferred to your bank account 
so earlier if you're talking about any pension schemes so pensions used to be given to the post offices and that so and so person who is to come to that so and so area and at that time so the people they used to go there and they will be getting pension but now it is mainly done through this direct benefit transfer so directly money will be debited okay uh, sorry the money will be directly directly transferred to the bank account itself so if you're talking about this concept of direct benefit transfer so it is to directly transfer cash to beneficiary's bank account and in this way this will empower the beneficiary to spend the amount it's originally intended and to arrest a privilege by these corrupt politicians so i want to share one experience so one experience i had here was so when i was uh, 10 to 12 years old so my grandfather used to get pension so at that time i and my grandfather used to go to that uh, pension area so where the pension will be given on first of every month uh, in the evening like 5 to 7 in between this time so we used to go to that some friends office and we used to get our get our grandfather's pension so at that time so if if we miss that date for example if you are going on third or fourth so we used to not get that pension and they will be saying that yes yes uh, what happened your pension got cancelled but the reality was so if any person who are not attending there on that time so the pension will be taken by the person who is issuing that pension so we can see that there was a lot of corrupt practices are present so but whenever we came up with this direct benefit transfer yes that will help to prevent this corrupt practices so directly on the time so this uh, so and so person who is eligible so he will be get money that is through their bank account directly so if you're talking about what are the categories of the schemes which are covered under this direct benefit transfer so for example welfare schemes for example subsidy schemes which are operated by different ministries different departments of government of india so they mainly which are involved in the cash and some kind benefit transfers they will be comes under this direct benefit transfer schemes so first if you're talking about the cash transfer so if so and so category of schemes or the components of the schemes so which talks about the cash transfers or the cash benefits so they will comes under this uh, cash transfer schemes under this dbt for example pahal scheme for example engineerega etc so under this what happens so first of all we will go for identifying of the beneficiary and we will be taking the bank details and to that bank details so there is a transfer of money will be happened and next one here is the kind of transfer from the government to individual beneficiary so this mainly includes for example pds system for example mid day meals program so this category the schemes which mainly includes like government will be providing some benefits kind of benefits for the in for the individual and it includes uh, extend expenditure which extend which internally to procure the goods and uh, for public distribution system and they will make some service available for the targeted beneficiaries okay and if you're talking about what are the prerequisites so what is the process for this direct benefit transfer so first we need to identify the beneficiaries on this uh, information technology platform so after that yes we will go for enrollment of beneficiaries and we will be linking aadhar card and later on we will be going for if they are having bank accounts it's okay so if they are, if they are not having bank account means yes we will be going for bringing of and bringing of unbanked population the banking purview and later on we will be connecting okay we will be connecting or linking their database with their bank account and finally so we will deliver the benefits till the last mile through this uh, networks okay so this is about this topic and now let us move on to next topic it is about explaining pakistan's flip flop on trade with india so this article which is talking about india and pakistan trade so why we are talking about this india and pakistan trade now as you all know that there is 148 percentage of heavy rainfall that is seen normally okay than normally in this pakistan's okay so because of this most of the areas they are flooded now so because of this uh, floods so standing crops had been had been under loss okay so there is some damage to this standing crops so because of this yes they need some external aid especially for the survival of the people so this article is talking about trade between india and pakistan so this article will be important from gs paper to under international relations and also we can connect this topic from our economy point of view so how we can connect this economy point of view so as you all know that exports and imports of country which comes under which comes in the trade 
so whenever there is increasing of exports from india to this uh, pakistan for example cotton and some food material yes that will leads to increasing of exports so this is the first thing and even we can connect this topic with internal security so what happened there suspension of trade between india and pakistan that happened because of this kashmir issue because of revocation of article 370 of indian constitution in august on august 5th and 6th of 2019 okay so from that time onwards there is no proper trade between india and pakistan and again because of this flood situation so they are asking for help okay regarding the good trade between india and pakistan so now let us try to understand this topic so one tip i want to give you for you students here is so whenever you are seeing one topic so you should not think in only one direction so try to think in multi dimensions so multi dimensional approach is very important to get good score in your means and even it will helps to create your own perspectives regarding so and so topic so now let us try to understand this topic so if you see why it is in news so pakistan's finance minister he stated that so here pakistan government may consider importing of vegetables and other edible items from india because of destruction of standing crops due to this massive floods in the region so because of massive floods and heavy rainfall in this pakistan now pakistan's finance minister said that we are thinking to import vegetables and as well as other edible items edible food items okay from india so this comes after 3 years when islamabad downgraded trade ties with new delhi so because of this kashmir issue which started in this 2019 because of revocation of article 370 of indian constitution so now here it is 3 years so there is downgrading of ties between india and pakistan and now there is some help which is mainly asked by pakistan because of floods and if you talk me about some details it mainly says that on march 31st 2021 so pakistan's new finance minister he announced that pakistan's economic coordination committee which mainly came with the decision to decide or which came up with the decision to import cotton yarn and as well as 5 lakh metric tons of sugar from india so recently here pakistan's economic coordination committee which finally came up with the decision to import some essentials for example cotton and as well as sugar from india and for textiles and sugar industries in pakistan they are importing from india is imperative and as far as practical and even uh, it is most economic because so the distance between india and pakistan is less and according to latest pakistan economic survey 2019-20 so cotton and sugar can production which declined by 6.9 percentage and 0.4 percentage and whenever they are importing raw material from india yes it will be very much feasible and economic for these cotton and as well as sugar industries in pakistan and this one here is pakistan keeps emphasizing on jammu and as well as kashmir issue to make any meaningful start in bilateral relations okay so pakistan which is mainly focusing on jammu and kashmir issue and they are focusing on to how to start meaningfully in bilateral relations and this shows supremacy of politics over trade and as well as economy so because of this kashmir issue there is decreasing of trade ties between india and pakistan and in this context we can say they are mainly focusing on political issues than compared to that of trade and economy of the country so as you all know if you are thinking about the trade and economy of the country it will be beneficial for the country at the large but they are not focusing on this but they are focusing on the political issues and if you are talking about for this pakistan cabinet so the interest of its own business community and its export uh, potential have become secondary okay so here for the pakistan's cabinet so own business of the community and as well as uh, exports so they are like secondary issues now okay they are focusing on just the primary issue here is kashmir issue okay so this is about this topic and i hope it is clear and now let us try to say next topic is regarding violent crimes in country back to pre covid 19 levels so actually you know that covid 19 entered in 2019 but the spread of this covid 19 which started by 2020 and in march and in the month of march 2020 so our government of india imposed national wide imposition of lockdown so what happened so before this covid 19 years there was high levels of uh, crimes that are seen in country and because of this covid 19 even now so many it companies they are uh, mainly uh, not allowing the workers to come to office and they are going for this uh, work from home 
and mostly here just 40 to 50 percentage of the people they were going for the office on certain days to uh, have their work in the office but now this report says that yes again we came back to the rates of uh, violent crimes in the country so how we used to have before this 2019 so that is the thing which mainly said and this article is important from your security point of view and even uh, from your social issues or society point of view and if you're talking about context so violent crimes they include for example rape kidnapping atrocities against children and robberies they registered across india that increased in 2021 and after this pandemic related restrictions that led to a decline in these severe offenses in 2020 Okay, so the violent crimes, for example, rape, kidnapping, atrocities against children and robberies, they had been increased and we came back to the pre-pandemic levels. So, if you're talking about data, for example, if you're talking about murders, so which does not come down even in 2020 and what happened in 2020 when there is increasing of these murders, so it is according to this National Crime Record Bureau. So, actually, so there is one question for you. So, please do refer some facts regarding this NCRB. Okay, so let me know in the comment box. So, when this NCRB came into existence. So, what are the objectives of this NCRB? So, next one here is the number of registered rape cases increased from 28,000 in 2020 to 31,000 in 2021. So, there is high increased cases of this rape cases. And this one here is the cases regarding kidnapping and abduction which fell to 84,000 in 2020. And in 2020, in 2019, okay, in 2019, it was like 1 lakh 5,000 cases. And again, in 2021, it was 1 lakh 1,000 cases which had been recorded. That means there is increasing of case of kidnapping and as well as abduction. And this one here is murder cases again continued their consistent increase with 29,000 cases in 2021. And it was 29,000 cases in 2020 and 28,000 cases in 2010, 2019. Okay, so these are some important data which says that yes, there is increasing of crimes, violent crimes in India. So, we are talking about some more important details which are given. So, the number of overall registered cognizable crimes, they had been decreased from 64 lakh in 2020 to 60.9 lakh in 2021. Okay, so, so that we can see there is 7.6 percentage of foreign cases. And the crime rate also decreased, that is 48 487.8 in 2022, 445.9 in 2021. So, there is also a decline in overall crimes in 2021 and that can be attributed to sharp increase in the case registered under disobedience to order duly promulgated by this public servant which comes in the section 188 of IPC. So, here this article says that yes, it is providing some data. Yes, this data says that there is increasing of crimes again and we entered into this pre-COVID-19 levels. And as a district collector, so what are the steps that you are going to take? And as a responsible citizen, so what is your responsibility? So, let me know your response in the comment box for sure. So, whenever I am asking the question, so try to give the answers. So, I will be getting encouraged with your comments. And I want to ask further more questions and I want to make you think more okay so this will be helpful for you finally itself or not for me so now let us try to see the next topic so this topic it is about women's safety in delhi so i selected this topic especially because if you see many interviews of upc toppers so there was some question if you are coming from delhi so they will be getting question regarding so what is your opinion regarding the safety of women in delhi so, because of this, I decided to take this topic, especially to give you one new dimension. So, this article is important from your society again and which comes in as GS paper too and even it will be important from our women empowerment point of view as well. So, if you know why it is in news, so if you see why it is in news here, so the national capital recorded the highest number of rape cases among all 19 metropolitan cities. So, among all 19 metropolitan cities, so Delhi stands first in the number of rape cases and with an average of three rape cases being reported every day. So, every day there were three rape cases reported and the report by this, this is a report by this National Crimes Record Bureau. So, now let us try to see some details. So, for the third consecutive year, so Delhi topped the list of crimes against women among all metropolitan cities 
and 2021 crimes against women they rose by 40 percentage so there is 40 percentage of increasing of crime over the previous years and with 1226 incidents of rape and 136 incidents of dowry regarding deaths so dowry related deaths are happening and as well as uh, rape which is mainly seen and uh, delhi tops the uh, rank in this 19 metropolitan cities and the city also recorded the highest incidence of crime against children and senior citizens okay so city also recorded the highest incidence of crimes against children and as well as senior citizens in the country and in the category of crimes against women so delhi also topped the list of metropolitan cities okay and here in the domestic violence also this delhi has topped and there are number of cases registered uh, regarding the cruelty of husband by or by relatives and reporting about 4674 cases okay so not only against this uh, and the cases regarding uh, rape and as sexual harassment but even domestic violence also which is high in this delhi and around 95 percentage of crimes against women they are carried out by their relatives and hence they do not amount to crimes related to law and order so these are some important things and now let us try to see so what are the steps taken by the government so i am adding about the recent steps and if you are from delhi so let me know some more important measures taken by government of india that is the government of delhi especially to control this crime against women so here they came up with self defense training camps for women and also setting up of pink boots near dark spots and which are prone to this women centric crimes and even especially the women who are taking coaching in this Karul Bagh region and in old Rajendranagar area. So yes, there were some steps which were taken by the Delhi police. So let me know so what are the experiences that you came up in this Delhi. Okay, if you are from Delhi. And this one here is training sessions. They are also held for senior citizens. So not only against the women, but even for the senior citizens also there is increased threat. So for this senior citizens, there is some training sessions they were conducted okay especially the senior citizens they were falling into prey for this cyber crime cyber frauds so there were about 60 1166 cases of crimes they are mainly registered against the senior citizens last year so this is about this topic and now let us try to see some articles from the other sources like indian express down to earth so first topic here it is regarding kutch branch canal so this topic is important from your infrastructure point of view which comes in your GS paper 3 under economy. And you can get a question from your prelims point of view from this Kutch branch canal. So now let us try to understand this topic in detail. So what is the uh, context? So why it is in news? So our prime minister he inaugurated 357.18 kilometers long Kutch branch canal and this canal which stretched from the Sardar Sarovar Narmada Dam in Narmada district in, uh, in district 700 kilometers away to the last village of this Gujarat. So it is present from the Sardar Sarovar Dam till the last village of this Gujarat, Manvi Taluka. Okay, so it is like 750 kilometers. So we are talking about uh, some details. It says that. So the cost for building of this it is about 6493 uh, 6, crores okay and it's one of the longest branch canal in the world so you can get a question like so which of the following is longest branch canal so that is kbc you have to remember this and the project which mainly began around 2008 and passes over this uh, dudhai village which was the epicenter of this uh, 2001 earthquake and there is also one issue regarding earthquake as well so because so one of the important cause for this earthquake here is dam induced earthquake and while construction of this branch canal it was completed in may and about 1200 kilometers of total of 5000 kilometers network of minor canals they are laying the distribution network it is yet to be completed so there are some incomplete so yes we are expecting that they will be completed soon so now let us try to see next topic it is regarding full court meeting so why i selected this topic because in mains or even in your prelims there are high chances of getting question regarding so recently full court meet is seen in use what it is related to and as UPSC aspirant and as rathor size students so you should not leave this question okay so for that 
only I took this topic for this uh, discussion. So title says what is full court meeting called by new CJI. So who is our new CJI that is Lalit. So after taking charge. So this article is important from your GS paper to under quality point of view. So this topic is important from your prelims and as well as means. So now let us try to see why it is in news. So within hearts of taking over the new CJI, Chief Justice of India, that is UU Lalit, he called for a meeting of full court, okay, where the judges discussed how to deal with issues related to listing and backlog of cases. So within hours of taking over, okay, so our new CJI, he called for this full court meet, okay, and they are going to discuss some important challenges and how to deal the issues relating to the listing and as well as backlog of cases. So as you know that there is increased case pendency of the case in this high courts and as well supreme courts yes, it is one of the most tough challenge before the judge to deal with this pendency of cases. And if you are talking about some details it says that a full court meeting literally means one which is attended by all the judges of court. So full court meeting means all judges of court they are going to attend the meeting and when it is held so there are no written rules dealing with this so there are no written rules regarding this full court meet so as per conviction so this full court meetings they are called by cj that is chief Justice of india and they will be discussing some issues of importance to the judiciary and he here senior as designations of okay, senior designations of practicing advocates in the supreme court and high courts are also decided during the full court meeting so during this full court meeting whenever all the judges of the court uh, supreme court they are attending this meeting so here they will be they will be deciding like uh, so here practicing advocates so who they are also deciding about this uh, senior advocates or senior designation of this practicing advocates in the supreme court and as well as high courts and also they will be decided during this full court meetings as full court meetings is convened at the discretion of the cji so it does not follow any particular calendar so if you ask me is exactly madam uh, if if there is a full court meet that happened today so again when this will go Okay, when will be conducted again? So for this there is no option because there is no answer for this. There is no choice here for me to say the exact date here because the full court meeting is conveyed at the discretion. This is a discretionary power of CJI. Okay, so you can also get a statement in your in your prelims like so. Which are the following of the discretionary powers of CJI? So with that discretionary powers, so they may say that full court meeting is conveyed at the discretion of CJI. But many of them they think that, ma'am, I didn't uh, see this statement in our Lakshmi Kant. So where can I get this? So this type of statements in this current efforts they become the potential prelim statements. So you have to read the statements detailly. Okay, such that the clearing of chances of this prelims will be very high. So this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding recovery of ozone layer achieves significant milestone. So this is talking about recovery of our ozone layer. So ozone is very very important and it is present at our stratosphere and the formula of ozone here is O3. So this ozone it is acting as a protective gear because so from the sun rays we will be getting the ultraviolet layer so here this ozone will not allow this layer to pass into our earth atmosphere that is the troposphere so because of this here yes we are very much safe because of this ozone layer but what happened whenever we are using or increasing release of this uh, ozone depleting substances into our atmosphere for example cfc's chlorofluorocarbons etc so that will lead to disintegration of this ozone that will lead to the formation of ozone hole so in this ozone hole here directly uv rays will be coming and falling so because of this it will be having some impact on our agriculture impact on the health of animals health of you humans etc so this article says that yes there is some water recovery of our ozone layer which is mainly seen and it's a good news and i collected this article from our down to earth so we're talking about the why it is in news so recently one report that is national oceanic and atmospheric administration of us so it said that the concentration of ozone depleting substances in mid latitude is significantly reduced when we are comparing with the 1980 level so now we are recovering from this ozone layer so if we are talking about ozone which is naturally occurring substance in the formula here is o3 and is a highly reactive molecule 
and it is made up of three oxygen atoms. And if you're talking about measurement of this ozone, it will be measured in DU, that is Dobson, Dobson unit. So about 90% of ozone that is seen in the atmosphere, that is in the stratosphere. But if the same ozone which is present in the troposphere, it is not good for our atmosphere. Okay, if it is present in the stratosphere, then only it is good. But if the same ozone which is present in this down levels or the ground levels, so it is a pollutant. So it is also found that the ground level in lower concentration that is in the troposphere whenever we have this ozone level so it is called as a pollutant because it will uh, causes the formation of smog so if we're talking about ozone depleting substances chlorofluorocarbons that is cfc's and other halogenated oxygen depleting or ozone depleting substances they are mainly responsible for man-made chemical ozone depletion so whenever we are releasing this chlorofluorocarbons especially when we are using safe refrigerators and acs etc so they will be releasing this chlorofluorocarbons so this chlorofluorocarbons and other halogenated oxygen depleting or sorry it is not oxygen it is ozone depleting uh, substances so they are mainly responsible so what is the reason behind this the reason here is man itself so man-made chemical ozone depletion and they are mainly used in refrigerators air conditioners fire extinguishers foams etc so in all these areas yes we are using this chlorofluorocarbons and whenever these chlorofluorocarbons are released into atmosphere that will lead to depletion of our ozone layer ozone layer thinning will happen and finally leads to ozone hole so if you are talking about the treaties which are talking about this ozone depletion so which are the some important treaties first one here is vienna convention so vienna convention for protection of ozone layer we came up in the year 1985 and it's when it's montreal protocol that we came up in 1987 kigali amendment which we came up uh, regarding the phase down of production and consumption of hydrofluorocarbons so these are some important treaties which talks about this ozone depletion regulations so if you're talking about where exactly this ozone layer is present so here this will be our troposphere so whenever this ozone which is present in this troposphere it is called as a pollutant so it is called as tropospheric ozone so whenever the same ozone which is present in the stratosphere that is called a stratospheric ozone and is very much good for the health of our environment so this is about this topic so now let us try to see today's prelims question and the mains question so mains question here is china is using its economic relations and the positive trade surplus as tools to develop potential military power status in Asia. So in the light of this statement, discuss the impact on India as her neighbor. So let us, uh, we have to understand the what is the impact of uh, this increasing of Chinese influence in the economic relations. And if you are comparing with the trade between India and China, yes, China which is having the trade surplus. And we have to understand what will be the impact on India. So this question is already appeared in 2017. And today's prelims practice questions of the first one here is which of the following is the most likely consequence of implementing UPI that is unified payment interface. So you might be using this UPI platforms right. So here the first option here is mobile wallets will not be necessary for online payments and digital currency will totally replace physical currency in about two decades and this one is FTI inflows will drastically increase. And last one here is direct transfer of subsidies to poor people will become very act, very effective. So the first option that is the mobile wallets will not be necessary for the online payments because we can go for the direct payments by using this UPI. Okay. And next question here is in India, it is reg reg legally mandatory for which of the following report on cyber security incidents. It's okay. First one here is service provider. The second one is data centers and third one is body corporate. So here the answer for this question is 1, 2, 3 that is service providers, data centers and as well as body corporate. And now let's try to see the vocabulary. The first one is uh, um, uh, pilferage. Pilferage means uh, the action of stealing things of little value. And this one is efferent. Efferent means an action or remark that causes outrage or offense. And modesty. Modesty means the quality of being relatively moderate. Okay, so this is about the vocabulary. And now I want to make a small announcement. We in Rathod's IS, we came up with a prelims test series. And here in this prelims test series, we are providing you 30 tests, which includes both GS and as well as CSAT. So we are providing the quality questions and we are also covering last one and a half year current efforts. So that will be very useful to clear your prelims. So if you want to clear your prelims, you have to analyze whether you are in the right direction or not. 
so for that joining this test series is very important and this test series is very affordable and accessible for all it is just 3000 rupees for 30 tests so try to join this uh, test series and one more thing here is we also came up with this mains answer writing batch new batch of this mains answer writing course of way uh, okay that going to be started from september 5th and here in this uh, course we are providing you weekly targets based on that daily one question will be given and we are also providing you model answer and there will be detailed evaluation of your answer with the feedback and we also coming up with live sessions live answer writing discussions on every sunday okay so that you will be getting idea like how you have to go increase improve your answer writing so one thing i can say here is yes this will be very very useful and try to join this course okay and i can assure you that within three months of time yes you are going to improve your answer writing skills uh, skills for sure and it's 100 percent assurance i can give okay so if you have any query regarding this courses so please call me on this number 8074765513 okay so now let us try to see our hindu newspaper pdf as usual so this is our today's hindu newspaper pdf so this is our today's hindu date here is august 30 2022 and this is delhi edition so first stop here regarding this uh, india and pakistan trade Amid floods, Pakistan opened to restarting trade with India. So because of this floods that seen in this Pakistan, because of heavy rainfall in this monsoon season that led to uh, that led to flood in this Pakistan and that also led to large amount of casualties. And finally here uh, Pakistan's government decided to uh, come up with a trade with India regarding this food grains, sugar, cotton etc. And next up here it is regarding violent crimes in country back to pre-pandemic levels. So this topic I discussed in detail. And if you move forward, if you move forward here in this city page, you can see women's safety in the metro. Okay, unsafe metro for women. So this topic is very important. And if you move forward, in this uh, page number four, there is nothing much important. And you can leave this page also. And here in this editorial page, there is one article regarding freebies. So number of times I discussed this topic. So you can go to this topic and you can revise what are the things that we already discussed in our earlier lectures. And if you move forward here, you can see during the patriarchal mindset, I discussed this topic. And here you can see one article in this open page regarding challenges of sub-national physical correction. So actually this topic it is regarding the center and state uh, financial issues already I discussed this topic and you can easily go through this once and I discussed about this direct benefit transfers topic and if you see in this text and context there is one article regarding this jurisprudence of bail so it is talking about especially bail is the rule and jail is an expect exceptions so already I discussed this topic number of times and you can simply revise this topic once and here in this topic which talks about this India and Pakistan trade I discussed this topic and if you move forward in this 10th page there is article regarding refill deal so you have to know what is this refill deal and what are the controversies regarding this refill deal so number of times we discussed this topic so just do some research regarding this so that you will be getting some more insights and if you move forward so this is according to that first topic itself that is regarding violence against women and if you move forward here in this 12th page here you can see Chinese troops stop grazers in Ladakh. Okay, so here you have to refer this issue between India and China regarding LAC standoff. And if you move forward here you can see pharma bodies new apps to ease business cooperation. So here I want to give you one homework. You have to know some facts regarding this National Pharmaceutical Pricing Authority. And if you move forward here in this world's page you can see there is one article that is snack postpones nasa moon rocket launch so today they we said that we studied that we are going to have this rocket launch by nasa but there is some postpone that is seen here and if you move forward in this business page there is nothing much but here you can see coffee day launched sorry reduced debt to 1810 crore in financial year 2022 so i already said about the case study of this uh, Siddharth, who is CEO of this coffee day, who, com who committed suicide and after that his wife take in charge as CEO of this coffee day and finally 
it reduced the debt from 4000 crores to 1810 crores it is a great success and we can see with this example we can quote that yes women are eligible and women can deal any issue and they are mentally stable than compared to the of men okay so this is about this topic and these are the some important news articles that appear in our today's hindi newspaper so by this i am concluding